In honor of this beautiful new Ninetales Hollowware coming out on October 1st, and the fact that Ninetales is just so freaking fun and amazing, and I actually am really excited for another reason that I'll get to here in a moment, I am updating my Ninetales Best Build Guide. Let's take a look at Ninetales, Ninetales Best Abilities, move sets, and why I actually think Ninetales is becoming one of the most versatile Pokemon to build inside of Unite. Let's do it. Hi everybody, Jake, your resident content cowboy here. Yeehaw, and I am back with a best build guide for Alolan Ninetales. The coolest thing I think about Alolan Ninetales right now is I actually genuinely like both paths you can go down with this for different reasons. So let's first talk about the most common move set that you would see on Alolan Ninetales for the longest time. And that would be the Dazzling Gleam Aurora Veil move set. The build here basically is you use Dazzling Gleam to stun enemies. You pop your Aurora Veil and it's that uh, area that you can stand in. When you're inside Aurora Veil, I'll just read it to you right now. It creates an or Aurora... <laughs> <laughs> around the user that reduces damage received by the user and ally Pokemon. So everyone inside there is receiving reduced damage. Great. While you're inside there, you also get increased movement speed and you get increased basic attacks while you're in there. They become boosted attacks, which is when Ninetail is shooting that big chunk of ice and it sprays out and does area damage to tons of enemies around. It's really incredible because it uh, it's helping you freeze people. It's helping you do damage to tons of Pokemon that aren't expecting to get hit, like some of the backline people. It's creating that veil where people are inside of it, taking less damage. It's a really wonderful build. And then once it gets upgraded, it reduces, uh, it further reduces damage that ally Pokemon receive. So it's really strong. It's it's more of a uh, it feels more of a supporter sort of attacker role. You're doing a ton of damage, but you're really supporting the team with this build. And up until very recently, I would have told you that is the only realistic build for Alolan Ninetales. If you are running that build, I would recommend probably something like mm, this as your held item choice. You're getting almost all your utility out of your muscle band, uh, just because you're doing so many basic attacks. Your focus band just helps keep you alive so you can stay inside of that veil longer, do your attacks longer, and help your allies. Uh, and then Buddy Barrier. Again, you're very support focused in this role. You're giving a barrier to yourself and an ally in this battle situation, and you're staying in the fight so you can continue to slow and stun people in multiple ways. This is probably what I would recommend for that build. You can build this in the uh, into a crit build. So Alolan Ninetales has no natural critical hit ability, but its basic boosted attacks can critically hit. So you can build a couple crit items like a scope lens and a muscle band on a Lolan Ninetales. It's not uh, it's not that ideal, but I have had some fun with it. However, I would say this is probably around the lines of the strongest build for that Dazzling Gleam Aurora Veil build. And uh, in my last video, I believe I show some Dazzling Gleam Aurora Veil footage. I'll show some more in this video a little bit later. The build I really want to talk about is something that I would have never built before, but right now I'm actually finding some fun with it, and that is the Avalanche Blizzard build. So so Blizzard has been upgraded uh, to where when it hits a wall, and that wall can include your avalanche, it creates a circular area that is a damage over time little ice circle there. And if you build that with something like, I might even just swap the focus band here and put on these little guys choice specs so alola ninetales damage uh with special abilities doesn't scale super well however choice specs whenever it hits you get a big pop of damage because alola ninetales has a lot of special attack so you could still be doing all of your basic attacks with it of course you're at range and whenever you're hitting with your abilities, which happens more often with that you know little uh area circle, you can trigger these choice specs again once it's once every eight seconds but basically this build is setting it up so more often you're going to trigger these you wouldn't want this on the other build because you could only hit with dazzling gleam and you're just not going to get the benefit as often but i've been running something like this 
on that build and having a ton of fun with it. It's it's a really, really cool uh, way to play Alolan Ninetales. Uh, really cool. Cool as ice, if you will. So the big strategy behind that build is setting up your avalanche wall and hopefully, you know, the enemy Pokemon is on this little side of it here, you're over here, and then you push them into the wall with Blizzard and that damage over time starts hitting them right there. I've actually had rounds where I've done, you know, over 100k damage with Alolan Ninetales with this build. It's... I'm not positive if it's better than Aurora Veil Dazzling Gleam. Aurora Veil Dazzling Gleam is still just absolutely incredible, but I wanted to let you know that I think this build is truly a legitimate way to build Ninetales. For those of you wondering why might I not build other items on them, I'll just talk about some of them briefly. Uh, Shell Bell, the issue with Shell Bell, while it's kind of a fun item, it just doesn't trigger often enough to be that useful. Uh, the special attack bonus isn't that high, and the cooldown reduction isn't that big. I think if they buff this item and they make the cooldown reduction considerable, like 15-20%, then this item will start to rise in prominence. Wise Glasses, the problem here is Alolan Ninetales doesn't scale well off special attack. I have another video on my channel kind of talking more about this. It's sort of a convoluted math mess, but the... The gist of it is for Alola Ninetales, its abilities don't benefit that much from its special attack stat. They do benefit, but not as much as you'd like. Uh, Focus Band, just a great item on almost any Pokemon. Energy Amp, I don't love in general. Score Shield, maybe if you really care about scoring. Um, yeah, so those are all the items I would recommend. Uh, again, this for the Aurora, excuse me, this for the Avalanche Blizzard build, and then something more like this here for the Dazzling Gleam Aurora Veil build. Uh, I'll show you the Dazzling Gleam Aurora Veil build first, and then I will show you a match with the uh, Blizzard Avalanche build. So maybe not full games because it could take a little it could take a little while, but I'll show you some key moments from these builds and how to use Ninetales most effectively. All right, here is an Alolan Ninetales match I played the other day. Looks like I'm heading into the top lane. I've got my Buddy Barrier, Choice, Specs, and Muscle Band on here. Almost all Master Rank players. You can tell by the little folds at the top right of the trainer card. That light blue is Master Rank. And let's head into the game. I'll be honest, I don't remember exactly what happens in this game, but I know I, I am playing uh, this build that I'm talking about here. Heading to the top lane with Blissey. This could be a fun lane for us right here. That boosted attack is just so fun. Snow warning is so fun. Although the Ninetales has so much great stuff going on. So my job inside this lane is going to be as best I can. Taking out those wild Pokemon. Stealing them from my enemies. If possible. Where are they? Oh, we get that one easy. Oh, they were a little late on the draw. They were going top and bottom. Maybe they take that one though. Ooh. Maybe they come in and start stealing from us. Oh, this doesn't look good, Jake. Let's see if I can back out. Nope. Nope. They take me right there. So, a uh, rough start for us in that lane. I got myself caught out as uh, Lola Ninetales there. Just got caught by that Electro Web and that Blastoise. Now I see their junglers up there. We've got Greninja in the top lane, our Talonflame in the top lane. So, a lot of fighting happening in this top lane over that first moment there. Oh, and we're coming back. This is a KO. This could be a double. Oh, cool. Just barely nabbed that one. Okay, there we go. So we come back from that a little bit. Checking on my enemies. We got 850, which means the bees are here. Putting my wall down, and we get a bit of that. Yeah, we get a good chunk of that there. Looks like their Blastoise wasn't there to fight it, so... You really want to be around for those bees at 8 minutes 50 seconds, absolutely. Just using my wall here. Try to take this Pokemon. Ooh, and where is this center one? Ooh, there he is! Ooh, I nabbed it! I nabbed it. I'm just putting that wall up. <laughs> I knew someone was coming, so I figured I'm just going to throw that up here. Pikachu with the net again. What an ability. So good. And it's going to get me in trouble. Oh, boy. I'm in trouble again, Jake. Uh, we got our wall there. Look at that. Yes. Another. Another. Just that basic attack spraying them there after that wall. You got the damage from Avalanche. You got the additional damage from that wall. And then very soon, we're going to have Blizzard. And Blizzard is going to do that increased damage here. So you'll see, I throw this down, there's my wall, and then I throw that Blizzard there. And he didn't run into it, but there's that area effect 
that triggers there at the end of it. If you can nail it right, and you will do a bunch of additional little ticks of damage to your enemy there. So it's it's a pretty fun ability. Let's see if I can get it here. Nope. <laughs> oh, they're gonna get me again. Same thing as before. Oh, my little my little ticks hit the wall right there. Didn't do anything against that Blastoise. It's about 720-ish. So we've got bees coming up again, and then we've got the possibility of rotating here. If they're both in top lane, I don't think it's a bad idea to be here for a second to secure this, but then it's about time to run down to bottom lane here. And you know what? I don't see them here. So I'm going to head to bottom. Looks like I'm farming my way down there. Just letting my team know I'm heading down. And yeah, they're not here. So I actually probably should be moving a little faster. There they are. I see them there moving down through the map. We've got Greninja and War Turtle right there. I'm going to move in. Put my wall up. And let's see here. Getting into our fight near Dread. Again, my whole thought is get that avalanche up and then hopefully push someone into it with Blizzard here. Timing's coming up. Ooh, this is a nice, really nice spot for it right there. Right on their goal. They're, they kind of think they're safe to stand in it there, but they are not. And we're just pushing them back. I'm just going to create a wall, and then it looks like it's time to score. Surprised I didn't try to score maybe a half second earlier there. And... Uh, just continuing to push him back. Look at that Talon Flame on a 4 KO streak. And now it's time to go after Dread. Throwing down my abilities there. You can see our little area of effect. Just doing tons and tons of damage there. It's really nice for stealing objectives too. If you can get that on at any at any good time frame. Wow, this Greninja is going to eat me I think. There he goes. Alright. So they've got top. Who got top? Did our Blissey stay top and get that Rotom? I was not even paying attention. <laughs> I think they might have. They either did that or they scored. I'm not sure. Okay. And uh, just taking out some wild Pokemon here. Kind of missed that little blizzard into the wall there. I was surprised it didn't trigger. I see Greninja moving bottom. This is an interesting point of the match right here because there's no objective to fight over, but you can lose one of your goals and you can take out wild Pokemon. So I see there's a bit of a team fight forming in the top lane. So I'm going to make my way to it here. I noticed that one of them's heading down. If I could catch him. And they didn't need any help. Turns out what needed help still, bottom lane. So, unfortunately, we might lose our goal here. But Pikachu fights off that Absol pretty well. I'm just going to grab this Aos Energy real quickly. And make my way down here. I see that there's some wild Pokemon on the map that people haven't eaten. So, I'm going to eat it, get some experience. We've got Dreadnought spawning again pretty soon, I would say. I don't remember exactly when it went down. But it's got to be probably about another 40 seconds from now. And everyone's heading top for Rotom. Clearly that Rotom was taken fast. So, running up here. Let's see. Got that. Ooh, missed with that wall. Oh, there's Greninja. And yeah, that wall right into pushing them with that Blizzard is what I'm looking to do. This would be a nice time to Unite, Jake. And there it is. Unite move right there. Pushing them away. We got the Talonflame just doing some work here. And ooh, Absol. Absol's trying to score on us. Let's see if I can catch him. Do I catch him? There we go. Take that, Absol. So, uh, Dread's going to be up in 10 seconds. Hopefully, right here, we can just take Rotom and move on. Looks like Talonflame's already decided that he's heading down there. Probably a smart play. And I'm just going to, yep, I'm just going to base and head down bottom. I'm letting bottom know I'm coming. I'm out of position here. So, that Rotom is not that valuable to lose Dread over. And I wonder if this costs us here. It, might, it looks like it might. I'm going to try to move my way around. I'm sure I'm going to throw my wall and Blizzard there if I can make it happen. Ooh, Talon gets it. Good job, buddy. Good job, buddy. And that War Turtle just walking into that damage over time there. Oh, no, Greninja, are you going to eat me? Nope. Couldn't do it. Couldn't eat me. This Venusaur could eat us, though. Venusaur is just so amazingly good right now. And now moving back towards the bottom here. Looks like I have an ally pushing up, so I'm just there to help. Creating that DOT in case anyone walks through it. But we definitely should be moving back. This is a rough place for this War Turtle to be in. I mean, he's still a War Turtle. And there's three minutes, three and a half minutes left in the match. If you're this far into the match, honestly, I would peel off an objective and just go get a couple wild Pokemon so you could level up. Not having your Unite move all game, not being Blastoise all game. This is true for other Pokemon like Gardevoir, or Garchomp. Go farm a couple wild Pokemon and... and level up you know try to be there of course for big team fights don't get me wrong but at the same time you can't be at 
three minutes, 30 seconds, and still not have evolved to your final form. That's pretty crazy. I want to stay around this goal near the bottom lane if I can, up until Zap. I might not be able to. I'm looking for more farm, and now I see two people are fighting top, and we've still got Pikachu bottom, so I move around. I just want to try to keep these goals as best as possible. Yes, it gives our opponent places to score, but lately I've noticed Zap has just been falling faster than normal. And if they're off scoring, that's not too bad for us, really. You know, it would be better for us if they were focused on scoring and we just went and took Zap, which I've seen happen a lot lately. Just throw that right into that wall right there. Take out Greninja. We got 10 seconds here. We can take this Rotom if we're all fast enough. Oh, do we get it? It's so close. We get it right at the buzzer there. So Rotom's heading down to that top goal, and now I'm making my way. Uh, oh, it looks like I was going to head towards Zap, but I guess our team has decided to push in here. This isn't a terrible play, as long as we're not letting them have a free Zap, basically. Let's see. Not too bad. Two of them are down. So this could be a big score. I just checked Zap with my camera right there. And, uh, oh, they eat me, though. I don't know. I don't know if that's the right call. I mean, we get their goal with a big score. It's good, but what if they take out three of us in this moment here? I don't love this play right now. Uh, I should be moving my camera around to see what's going on, but I'm sure, knowing me, I got KO'd, and I checked my phone for a half second. So <laughs> uh, let's see what ends up happening. Obviously, they're fighting near Zap. We've got two down. They've got one down. I'm back up. Blissey's back up. Heading back into the match here. Checking with the camera. It looks like Zapdos is still up pretty well, so that's good. I've still got my Unite move. I didn't burn it in that fight. I wanted to save it for the Zap fight. And I'm just going to try to push them around. Make them regret ever coming near this Zapdos fight. That's what I'm trying to do. Blastoise obviously can beat me up pretty good. So we'll see if he does. Yeah, he did a pretty good job. Ooh, <laughs> Zapdos almost got me there and now we're just kind of holding here we don't need zap and there's only 30 seconds left so the best thing we can do is just kind of stay safe you know make sure they don't take zap and then move from there and yeah, nice little ice there hurting that abs a little bit and oh we blocked in greninja oh but greninja got blocked nice job jake <laughs> gg jake uh so yeah looks like we just defend zap here that's a pretty good win Got our goals up and everything, so we managed to hold them pretty well. And there's that Blastoise Unite move taking me out. That is that, uh, again, that all ice, that Avalanche Blizzard build. And before, I would never have recommended it. But right now, with those choice specs, I'm having a lot of fun with that build. You might even be able to build it even more intense, uh, special attack-wise, and have some fun with it. But that was, uh, that was that first build. Let me show you a little Aurora Veil. Just taking you near the end of the match here. You can see I have my Unite, my Aurora Veil, Dazzling Gleam. Uh, Dazzling Gleam was the stun, and then the Aurora Veil, you just chunk people down with your basic attacks here. So I have other videos on my channel of this build. This is what I would consider to be the standard Ninetales build, as strange as it sounds. When I first started playing Ninetales, I thought it was going to be uh, the Ice build. But only recently do I feel like the Ice build has become more and more viable. we got Gardevoir coming in here. Ooh, nice Unite from Gardevoir. And I try to catch it with that uh, Ninetales Unite. I'm not able to do it there. But you can see the Aurora Veil. Just the thought behind it is you pop your Aurora Veil and you do a ton of basic attacks and slow people down. Here you can see us just fighting in lane with it. You put that Veil down so all your allies can benefit. You hit them with the Dazzling Gleam. You feel more like a supporter, I guess, than attacker, really. You're just trying to stun people and let your team take them out here. Oh, so close, so close. No, I don't get it. Close. Again, more videos on my channel with this build here, but you can see the basics of it. You're just getting that veil around you and your allies, and then you can use boosted attacks the entire time while stunning people with Dazzling Gleam. It's super fun, and it's what I would consider probably the standard Ninetales build. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I can't wait for the new Hollow Wear because it looks friggin' amazing. There is an updated Ninetales guide. Goodbye, everybody. I love you. Mwah!